Yo, what's up? I'm not gonna show you guys the charging of the Mustang MX-30. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm gonna roll the tape now. All right, we now have uh, four other, I mean, four cars totally. And the reason why I chose these cars is that they are similar priced. So you see now, Right off the bat now, E28 is charging at 96 kilowatt, really impressive speed. So this EV though, second, it's charging at 75 kilowatt, also pretty ex impressive speed. But now E28 started throttling to 76 kilowatt, but then the Cetus EV also throttled. But you see that MX-30 is down to 34 kilowatt. It never went past 34 kilowatt. It's 100 amp, the math here doesn't count up because if the charging, uh, if the voltage is 355 and the amp is 100, it should be 35, uh, 36 kilowatt, but it's showing 34 kilowatts so that's a bit weird uh, I actually don't know I've never seen it before we are charging at ionity charges eh? so we on the other hand seems to be uh, capped at 125 I'm okay fair enough just like um, just like the i3 it's also capped at 125 the 125 amp limit seems to be a very common limit because that's also the limit at 50 kilowatts fast charger but then because the voltage is lower then we don't get 50 kilowatt we get 44 kilowatt in the Zoe now e28 is still charging like a boss look at that 76 kilowatt all the way to 42 percent really Impressive speed. The Cetus EV can't keep up. It's down to 55 kilowatt now. MX30, on the other hand, is charging at 34 kilowatt. It's consistently slow, maximum 100 amp, and these batteries were heated up enough. So I tried to drive the MX30 a lot, and I could never get it past 100 amp. So yeah. All right, what's happening now with the Zoe? It's still charging at 44 kilowatt. Nothing to see, nothing to see. E28, oh, it start throttling. Uh, right before 50% mark, it start throttling down to 52 kilowatt. But you see, it took only 18 minutes to reach 54%. Uh, whereas the Cetus EV, also pretty impressive. Takes also about uh, uh, 20 minutes. Well, actually, uh, uh, I forgot. Uh, the E28 started at 5%, so that count is a little bit miss. Uh, yeah, so you see, it's about one minute slower than the other ones, or actually longer than the other ones. But um, uh, I should also mention the range here that the MX-30 has around 200 kilometers of range, whereas Zoe has almost 400 kilometers. So, so in percentage, Zoe, 1% on Zoe counts almost like 2% on the MX-30. And then as for E28 and, and MG Zeta CB, those two cars, they have around 300 kilometers range on a good day. So it means that they count around 1.5x of the MX-30 if you guys follow me. So we can't compare this percentage directly, but okay, anyway, okay, what's going on there now? Oh, E28 has started throttling down to 43 kilowatt, and the SS EV is down also to 40 kilowatts, slightly slower. Now, you guys have seen the battle before between E28 and SS EV, but let's take a look at the MX30 then. It's, oh, it's, oh, it's, you see it? Went up a little bit to 35 kilowatt, but 40, 34. It seems like 34 kilowatt is the maximum for MX30, but now also the MX30 started throttling a little bit, we're down to 32 kilowatt fairly flat charging curve though compared to the zoe zoe is well i mean it's it goes gradually up because you see the, the amp is limited to 124 and then as the voltage goes up then the the speed slowly goes up e28 started throttling again the second throttle time now it's down to 27 kilowatt and set this ev is still charging at 37 kilowatts so you see the e28 had a pretty big lead in the beginning but if you for some reason need to charge to let's say 80 percent or 90 percent you will see that the set ev and the e28 they have similar uh, um, similar charging time and also similar range but uh, again uh, yeah okay and anyway okay um what's happening now with the mx30 oh mx30 is down to 25 kilowatt that's kind of slow yeah but uh, it's a small battery so what can you expect huh? oh no the zoe zoe has reached the, the break point now so it also start throttling we're down to 48 uh, 41 kilowatt you see the number of amps is down to 110 so we're not receiving the maximum potential if this was an i3 it would take 125 amp all the way to over uh, 85 percent which is massive too bad we didn't include i3 but i3 has a bigger battery and also slightly more expensive so that's why we chose these four cars okay e28 is now at 85 percent so this ev is at 82 percent which car is going to be first there because e28 is down to 11 kilowatt whereas the set this ev is, is at uh, 17 kilowatts so set this ev now is charging faster than e28 if this was a race when you had to charge to 90 percent then it's going to be really even and then what about the mx30 mx30 has a 20 kilowatt it's also start throttling but you see this is really impressive the mx30 because it has smaller battery than the other ones but it's still charging very fast uh, 19 kilowatt that's actually
actually uh, more than 0.5C. 0.5C at 85 kilowatt is really massive you compare to the other cars. That means that the other cars would be charging at over 20 kilowatt and they're only t charging at 11 kilowatt. You see at the E2H, 11 kilowatt, the ZSEV is at 7 kilowatt, slightly better. And so it though, is slowly, slowly has more uh, gradual ramp downs. Is it down to 34 kilowatt now? Is it at 90 amp? Uh, but MX30 is almost at 90% now. If this was raised to 90%, then you will see that MX30 is going to win. But does it matter? Because the, the, uh, the, the range on the MX30 is so much lower than the other one. So we can't really compare them. But to, just to show you guys that MX30 is actually charging pretty fast. You see, all, already at 90% is taking 17 kilowatt. And I, I'm actually going to charge an MX30 past 90%. And you see now that the E28 is at 10 kilowatt, 89%. And the ZS EV, this is neck on neck. These two cars are so even, 89%. Uh, but you see that ZS EV is actually taking 18 kilowatt, whereas the E28 is only 10 kilowatt. And now E28 finished, and then ZS EV finished. Really close. It was just 30 seconds between them. And then uh, MX30 is still going strong, but you see, this is the strength of um, the MX30. It, it can actually charge fairly fast past 90% if you need to. Well, you probably want to. But then you see that the Zoe, this is the difference between the Zoe and the E28 and the ZSEV because I mentioned that the Zoe has more range than the other ones. But practical, if you drive, uh, once you drive it down and then you have to charge, then the Zoe is actually slower. We have seen it in the 1000 kilometer challenge that the Zoe is slower than the two other ones. And here you see why, because most of the time, you know, the two other cars, they charge so fast and they can use usually charge to around 70% and then off they go and then Zoe is charging slow all the time kind of so it's a little bit disappointing because Zoe has the biggest battery but is charging the slowest of them all so can you imagine if we had a, a, an MX30 with a Zoe battery and maybe well I mean the, the Zoe battery size but maybe the, the MX30 uh, tech or whatever because well, when I measured the MX30 range range test I measured that it had almost no uh, heat loss at higher speed so it could indicate that the MS30 battery has good internal uh, low internal resistance just like actually just like e-tron and Tesla so just it's just a shame that they um, they chose to go so slow on the MX30 it's, it's charging only at around 1c Okay, nothing to see now. Okay, finally, so we also reached uh, ninety percent. Eventually, took over an hour. Wow. So um, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, yeah. Okay, they're done. So, uh, but you know, the funny thing is that so many people they um, they criticize MX thirty. I mean, I, I, for a good reason because I think people are are disappointed in the MX thirty range because. But you know, must on they chose to make an affordable car. Um, well, okay, uh, Zoe is more like uh, they chose bigger battery, but Zoe doesn't even have adaptive cruise control. Zoe doesn't have a head-up display like Mazda has. Zoe doesn't have the nice LED adaptive headlights like, like, like the Mazda has. What does? Uh, Zoe doesn't have a 360 camera, you know? So the Mazda is, is you, ha you get lots of nice equipment, but uh, they sacrifice. Uh, battery yeah that's the problem uh, but if you don't drive that far you you, you just have to know your needs you know uh, if you don't drive that far then actually uh, the master is gonna be okay okay car but what I'm gonna what I find a little bit in, uh, funny is that uh, whenever a, a car is charging fast like a Tesla then people criticize and say that uh -huh, but uh, actually no well yeah something like that like um, um, Okay, okay, okay. How, how they put this? Uh, when when people look at Etron, Etron is charging really fast, and then uh, people they criticize and say that well, but how is the battery degradation going to be? You know, is it healthy to charge that fast? Um, Tesla lovers they tend to do that, right? So they are like, ah, just wait and see how how fast it is degrade because it's charging at over one C at and at seventy percent, eighty percent, right? And then when but when but then when batteries or cars are charging slow, let's say like MX30, then people don't say, oh, this is great because um, a Mazda, they chose to, uh, to conserve the battery and not charge too aggressively so, so that uh, we, uh, we conserve the, the battery health. No, they just, they just uh, criticize and say that this is bad, this is shit, this is a compliance car.
I'm not defending Mustang because uh, honestly, yeah, I think they could have pushed it more. They could at least charge it at 1.5C at lower status charge, maybe even 2C in the beginning, you know? Because for what I've seen when I measure the battery in the, on the MX-30 is that, um, to my big surprise, when you drive at 90 kilometers per hour versus 120 kilometers per hour, in the 120 test, the consumption was higher, but I managed to get the same amount of energy out of the battery. That is really impressive. I've never seen it before, actually. Uh, the closest one I've gotten was from a Tesla Model 3 and an e-tron. They have low internal resistance, but this means that uh, the Mazda MX-30 also has low internal resistance based on my test. A bad battery is Honda e. Honda e was pretty shitty even in summer. Uh, the, the difference between high high load and low load was 5%. Yeah, basically, if you hammer it, you lose a lot of heat. And the same thing I measured in uh, Polestar battery, actually. So, yeah. So, actually, it turns out that the, the battery in, the, in uh, the MX-30, in my test, seems to be a pretty good one. But they just put a too small battery and they were too conservative of... Uh, you know, charging it so slow. So uh, that's a bummer. They should at least bump it to 125 amp or something. Yeah. But okay. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.